So apparently, Adventure Kings does a camper trailer. Now I didn't know that until a customer rang up called Lee and told me he had one. So I asked Lee, I said, Adventure Kings, is this the same guys that do the awnings and the swags and the rooftop tents and, and all that sort of stuff, kayaks, all that, you know, stand up paddle boards. And he goes, yeah, same, same company. I said, really, I didn't know that. Um, anyway, so he's, he's brought it around. He wants me to take out some of the pain points. It looks like a pretty good unit. They've done a massive test on it where they've, um, there's a lot of great videos online. If you want to check them out, they've, you know, towed them for nine, 10 hours a day through the, the scrubs and trying it all out and all that stuff. So they're very good to modify, you know, to, to suit your needs with a couple of different options and stuff. Now, Lee's a bit of a pro at modifying. He's modified a lot of camper trailers and motorhomes. I'll, I'll speak to him about it. A um, couple of modifications he's done, pretty fantastic. Um, he's done the lithium upgrade to lithium batteries. He's switched a lot of the switches. You can see um, some of the switches, the kill switches for different things over here. He's, he's moved to this side of the trailer because this is where you're working most of the time. He's got a Topogy flow meter, also the Renergy battery monitor in there. So it's all very, you know, it's all done so neatly and stuff like that. Um, as for the gas side of things, he has put this shelf on the top here, you can see. Um, and the main reason for that, he's got a, one of these, uh, the Bush Company rooftop tents that are on the top here. I've had a, you know, I've still got my, um, my rooftop tent and at night or when it's cold and you've got to climb down the aluminium ladder, it kills your feet like big time. So he thought, well, if I open it this way, he can use all this area to step up onto and get into his rooftop tent. So a lot, a lot safer to, to climb up on. So that's a great idea. So this is, you can stand on this. He's put down a 4kg gas bottle in here. So it fits everything. So he wants a regulator in there and then a couple of bayonets out the side or something so he can hook up his, um, his Dometic stove that he's got that he's gonna, sh gonna show me. So this is some of the stuff, great stuff he's done. Check this out, the kitchen and stuff that they got. So this sort of, I thought this is how it came. Um, so you've got the, the big fridge drawer here. So this comes all the way out, right? Okay, and then Lee showed me this. He said, you push this handle down and you pull this out. I said, Lee, this, this is amazing, mate. This is you know really good quality stuff. And he said, oh no, it didn't come like this. I just came with a plastic bucket here and, and you can put your stove here and there. I said, oh, so you, you've cut it all in. Now, he's done a really nice job. Like this looks like it's you know, pulled out of the factory like that. So he's used good quality sink here, and he's got a great quality two burner Dometic cooker here with you know flame failure device and all the rest of the stuff, pizza ignition. So what he wants to do is hook up some way, an easy way of just, you know, because I've got a lot of videos like on the Robinson stuff where you can just clip stuff in, because I want to make it as easy as possible for people to hook up, um, you know, gas stoves and stuff, tools as well, so your nine year old kids can hook them up and, be, and do it safe. So he wants, figure out how to hook it on here somewhere i've got a draw underneath that i've got to try and avoid hitting and so i'm struggling with a bit of space we're just going to put one bayonet on the other side gas regulator in here and two bayonets on this side okay so one of them will be for the dometic stove here and the other one will be for his marine um, grade barbecue which has a flame failure device so i don't know if you're aware of this but back in april 2021 new gas regulations came out that they said that anything that you plug into a bayonet has to have a flame failure device. So uh, jokers have flame failure device. A lot of these upper end barbecues and stuff, they have flame failure device. Now, you can tell if it's got a flame failure device, if it's got a little, um, let's call it a thermocouple that sticks in the flame. Now what that does is when the wind blows out, it shuts the gas off, okay? So it's, yeah, one of the regulations they brought in, so you know, don't plug your Weber barbecue. I think Weber's trying to sort that out um, with retrofitting it or something, I think they're in the. I've seen on forums where they're talking about it. So, so just just to be clear, right? If you've got a bayonet, and so you got your Weber here, you're going to cook some steak. If you take the hose and plug it into your bayonet, that's illegal now, okay? So because if the wind comes in and blows the Weber out, the gas is just going to keep flowing out, okay? But if you take that out and plug it straight into your bottle, then that's not illegal. Because if the wind comes out, and wind comes and blows it out, then you're going to empty your bottle. See the difference? Yeah. So, I don't know. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll sort this out. I'll show you through the build as, as we're going through it. And hopefully it'll delete some of these pain points for, for Lee. And hey, we, he'll be stoked with it. So, all right, guys. Um, we'll see you on the other side. Okay, done and dusted. The Adventure Kings MT1 camper trailer. The gas points are all installed and the pain points have magically disappeared. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's been a good build. It does take a bit of time, but because you've got to you know, speak to the customer, get the brief, 
say what they want, their bayonets, where it's going to work, if they want a jorker and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got to figure out, can I put the bayonets where they've asked for? Because the last thing you want to do is punch a hole through the side of the camper and go, oh, by the way, I can't use that anymore because, yeah, it's hitting the gas, it's hitting the brake line or something. And then you've got to look underneath and see the best route for the gas pipe to go to, where we can clip it and where we can be protected. Now, I've used, um, on this one, I've I always weld on my tees because I think if you're going over rough stuff, you want to, once you weld the tee, that's, that's there forever, right? The only other option you've got on the camper trailers, you can't use stuff like um, B-press fittings. You, this is the one we use on standard houses. You can't use these for some reason. That's what it says in the, in the standards. The only other option you have are the flared, flared fittings. So I've got another video about the flared fittings and why I, I, um, I, don't, I don't rate them that much. Uh, for, for road vans and stuff, you'd be all right. But not many people um, actually, you know, not many people use the welded stuff. The reason I like the welded stuff is in, in the size it's a bit smaller, it, it's sort of forever and, and the good thing about it too is that if all you need to do is measure up you know the whole length, you know some, some of these angles you've got to go round chassis bars and down and stuff so if you know how to use a benders, which a plumber should know how to use a bender, sort of what you should learn, um, you can draw up all the measurements, you do a, you know, grab a bit of cardboard, draw out the measurement, bend up the whole pipe, then the good thing about it, you can sleeve it all. Now the sleeve that I'm talking about, if you weld them, you can have this, this sort of stuff, okay? This is a solid core, it's, it's all the way protected, it's really strong, really flexible, right? And you can just slide that over the copper before you weld it. And then the other stuff you use, this is the one that's split, it's the, it's the split corrugation. So most of the time, and you just got to push that over the last little bits. So that will push over a T, like nicely, right? See that? So just for the T's and section, you got to use the split stuff, but the rest of it can be covered in this whole thing where the whole thing protects, there's no way of falling off or anything like that. That's why I like using it. But there is a hard thing that you've got to weld that, you know, weld that T in, in position sometimes. So most times you can take out that whole section, weld it all up in the vise, and then put it back and only got maybe one or two joints to weld up at the end. Now, it's a lot harder because you've got to protect the camper trailer from the heat, okay? So sometimes, yeah, you've got to figure that because the last thing you want to do is burn something or singe some paint off or something like that. So yeah, it is a bit more difficult, but this is, you know, if you weld it, it's, it's sort of future-proof, especially if you're pulling it over rough stuff. Like, I'll give you an example. If I were to do this, this job, this build, what I've just done, and I had to use flared fittings, you'd need 11 flared fittings. You'd have 11 flared fittings on this, on this camper trailer, okay? But because I've welded everything, it's brought it down to two. So it's, you know, two joints that you've got to worry about that may leak. If you don't believe me, like, where do I get 11 from? I'll tell you. There's three bayonets, so there's three, three flared fittings on those. Okay, flare feeding. Then you've got two T's, which is another three for each one of those. So up to nine now. Then there's one on the hot plate. You need to have one on the hot plate because you've got to remove it in the future for servicing or something like that. And there's one under the gas regulator. So that brings us up to 11. Now I've got rid of all the T's, the flares and all that stuff for the bayonet. And the only two I've got is one for the, for the hot plate, which you've got to remove anyway, and one for the gas regulator. Now the good thing about that, they're both accessible, especially the gas regulator. You can see it. When you turn the bottles on, you can see it, you can smell it, it's right there. You're gonna pick it up pretty quick if something's you know, happened under there. You can spray it with soapy water right there, easy to do. So, you know, but if you're going underneath checking these things, you're not gonna smell it. LPG leaks down, it's heavier than air, and it just, just goes down like that. So that's why I, don't, I, I'm, I haven't seen many people do a welding like this, and that's the reason I do. It's a bit more difficult. Okay, these fittings are a bit cheaper, but you know, it's a bit more difficult, but it's a way better job, future proofs it, especially if you've got an off-road caravan. Anyway, I'll show you the setup. I'll just show you the hot plate, really, because everyone knows how the bayonet and the jokers and that hook, hook up. I've got other, other videos about that, so I'll show you that now. Okay, just open this up. He's done such a good job with this one. Pull it out. Now, what I like about these setups is Dometic's got stacks of room so you can actually store the gas stove, uh, the gas hose in here, which I think I think is great. It's not taking up any more room in your camper, keeps it nice and dust free and all the rest of the stuff. So all you gotta do is, is, is pop this out like normal, okay? I can leave that open. And then on the other side here, you can see the mail fitting. That's for the, for the quick release I've got out coming here. Now, it's quite difficult to get it in there because I had like 20 mil gap at the back of this drawer here and there was probably about another 30, 40 on top of the, on top of the drill. So I had to try get it on this angle 
it was important that when it slid back, it didn't didn't inter you know it didn't hit this this part as well. So setting it up, testing it a couple of times, making sure that's all all right. Took a bit of time, but now it's in there. It's you know, it's rock solid, not going to move. It's set up beautifully, and this is how easy it is to set up. So again, just take the uh, the gas plug out, the dust cap, shove your bayonet in like this. Okay, then the hose there just just pull that down when you when you want to put it on it's the easiest thing Fl slide it on and now you you know your cook is all connected ready to go um so it's super easy to do um and then you can you know light it up make sure your gas bottle's on and again to take it out you can take out either end it doesn't matter because it no gas is going to leak that's why you know that's why i love it when, when the kids can hook it up for their mum and stuff like that so it's great so again just pull that down slides off easy same with the bayonet and then you can just roll it up you can stick it back in the hot plate like that just rest it in there under that bring it around all the way i oh, stick down there that's what i was doing last time he'll get used to it look at that pop it down and close it up like that and she's back to uh off traveling again all right so i'll just um give you a bit of a close-up of the bayonets there give you a look look underneath too what it looks like see how neat that neat that all looks and so that's all all welded tees and everything okay and then see how I folded it around I couldn't I couldn't go through the the chassis right so I had to, to duck it under here but there's going to be some you know legs here so that will protect from the rocks I brought it all the way up over and then you can see on the other side over here all important gas certificate saying it's all legit yeah this is the other bit over here I got so this is for the um, dual cot water system. The reason I stuck it here instead of on the side is because you're walking past this all the time. Now he's thinking about maybe mounting, you know, like putting one of the the, the dual cot brackets up here. Then the gas hose can sort of come out of here and then come up next to this box, and it won't be sort of sticking out this way. So you know, just it's good to think about that sort of stuff. You can see that's the, the welder joint there. It's all, all all going over, all good. Okay. Also, I'll show you inside the. Um, gas box too it's got the uh, all important reflective sticker for the fireys so they know that there's something dangerous in here if they do come across it on the side of the road or anything like that up in here too it's got the uh, badge just you know tell you turn off the thing all the safety stuff i uh, got the new regulator down here so there's that the, the, really the only one joint that you got to worry about easy to spray and everything um, and see and also you can smell it it's got all the vents in the bottom of the above this box here and he's made this um, wood surround uh, if I can get it out, yeah, it's stuck in there a bit, but he's got this wood surround that goes over this and locks locks it all in place. Also, you really need this label here, and that just tells people not to put drill, you know, batteries in here because you, you could easily fit a you know battery powered chainsaw or something in there. But yeah, you just want to keep any of that stuff out. Put your toilet chemicals in there and stuff. That sort of stuff's fine, but nothing like that. Anyway, um, that's the build. Hot plate, all done, all sorted. So anyway, thanks for watching guys, and uh, if you've got one of these Adventure Kings and you're in WA, give us a call if you want us to, to do it. If you're in the other states, show the guys the video and say, just want exactly what this guy's done, if uh, that's what you're after. All right guys, thanks for watching, I'll catch you later.